I mean, I have no stake in the outcome of this experience. I'm here to hopefully make the world a little bit better by my presence in it. I'm only here for a breath. It's it's such a short ride. I mean, I'm, I'm 64 years old. I, I remember when I was a kid just the other day. So it's a really short ride. You can't really have a stake in the outcome of this and think of, well, I'm, I'm going to achieve this big thing and I, it's going to be this golden reality that I'm creating because you're going to be gone soon. That's a given, you know. So it, it's we, we place too much emphasis on the physical. You know, I want a big front door. I want, I want a big house. I want to be able to buy beautiful jewellery for my wife. I want to be able to have all this pile of stuff so I can sit on top and say, look at me, I'm successful. But really it's about this. It's about you. It's about finding out what your true purpose is and finding out how to express yourself in an unlimited capacity as human consciousness, you know. That's what you really come here to do. And I look at this whole thing as a soul test, you know. So, I mean, it's a it's a way of, of getting rid of the spiritual baggage, a way of getting rid of the consciousness that doesn't work properly. But by the same token, we have so much invested in this, this physicality and this this uh, this reality we've created for ourselves in our home or our car, or, or you've got to be prepared to let all that go. Put on a backpack and just walk into the woods if, if need be, because I mean that's that's what we might have to do. But how many people can do that? How many people have still got the life skills to do that? So these are the sorts of things people need to start thinking about. You know, what what do you need to do to survive? If the system was just to go away and disappear, and you were just dropped in the woods. Could you survive? So you need to sort of start looking at yourself as a human being. What does it mean to be human? And this is a great opportunity to rediscover yourself. It's a great opportunity to get rid of all of the trappings of this, this fictional, pollutive, destructive society that we live in and just come back to what it means to be human. So you can look at it that way. I mean, there's a great fear of losing all of this stuff and all these conveniences and these mod cons and these little gadgets that we use. But what about being human? What about being human? So it, it's a it's a great opportunity for that. And you're being put into a position where you don't have a choice. I mean, I've got all this stuff that I do, but by the same token, I've got a tent, I've got a bow and arrow, I've got a backpack. I could easily pick it up and just walk into the woods if I have to. And I can survive. I can do some trapping. I can do some hunting. I can do some growing some food. I can pick some berries. There's a lot of edible stuff around. So if it comes to it, well, that's that's what you might have to do. It's an energetic, it's an energetic universe, and it's it's a it's a world of mirroring, a mirroring emotion. If you, you can think of it as a pro- projection, you know, there's only really one of us here. You know, if you can think of the mind of God shattered into seven billion fragments, so it can experience itself. We can have a conversation, mm. but it's a law of mirroring. When people are, are um, stressed out about stuff. The universe just gives them more of it. I mean, you're totally stressed out about money all the time. You're never going to have money. You're always going to be stressed because it's a mirror. It's a mirror. Um, you, know, you think of the the heart as, as being a, a power source, a, a generator, which which generates an emotional energy, which feeds your brain. And your brain is a quantum instrument that, that creates a projection and will turn possibility into actuality depending on the emotional input it receives from the heart. So... When you're stressed about stuff and you think, oh, no, the cops are going to pull me over, the cops are going to... Yeah, of course they are, because you're pulling it in, you're drawing it in. I just don't think about that stuff. It doesn't... It's not part of my reality. And so I just don't call that in, you know? And, and that's just the way reality works. It's just the way the universe works. It's a law of mirroring. And if you, you live your... your uh, follow the, the one law of creation, which is unconditional love and service to creation... That's the way I live my life. And and I haven't had a bad day in probably 20 years since I've had a bad day because I just don't call that in. I don't have any attachment to the things that people... I mean, all the things that, that people think are problems and shit. I mean, that time 25 years ago when you were really upset that day, you think about it now. What does it mean? It doesn't mean shit. Are you upset now? It didn't mean anything. It didn't mean anything back then either. You just thought it did, hmm. you know? This is the stuff with all this baggage that we hang on to. People, people live their lives in, in a state of anxiety and fear, usually over stuff that happened in the past, which doesn't exist now, or apprehension of stuff which may happen in the future, which doesn't exist now. So they're not in the now. They're not. They're, they're lost in their mind, you know, and they're lost in all of these possibilities and all these memories and all these possibilities, none of which exist now. So they're lost in their imagination. You know, they're lost in their mind. They're living their lives in fear of the non-existential. You know, in fear of the non-existential, well, we call that insanity. 
<laughs> so people live their lives according to different socially acceptable levels of insanity. And that is our society. And as soon as you see that, you can just step out of it, step onto a different path, throw yourself to the wind. I've often said, if you throw yourself to the wind, you can ride it. No stake in the outcome. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't have any plans. People say, how come you, you went around the world? Like I went overseas in 2012 for two weeks, ended up going right around the world. I was away for three and a half months, went right around the world, got home again. And everyone said, how did you do that? when you didn't plan it. And I said, well, that's the thing. I didn't plan it. If I had plans, I wouldn't have done most of the stuff that I'd done in my life because I would have had other plans. Mm. But, you know, you've just got to let yourself be open to the possibilities and just flow with it. And you end up in the most miraculous places, doing the most miraculous things. It's even when you start a project and you've got this vision of what it looks like at the end, let it, when you... When you start a project, it becomes a living thing. It becomes an organic life force. Let it form its own life. And then something might happen that you didn't even see. You couldn't even foresee where it was going to take you. And it took you to this incredible place and became this incredible thing that you didn't even know you were going to build or construct because you just left it open to do it itself. You know, and you didn't have a stake in the outcome of what it was going to be, this thing, you know. So... That's the way I look at life. And I think if people look at that life, you find it just unfolds organically. And it's people's inability to do that and to let other people dictate what they can and cannot do and what is right and what is wrong and whether you're healthy or whether you're not, which has all led to this situation. You know, it's this, this lack of responsibility. People want freedom, but they don't want the responsibility that comes with being free. I want to be free. You tell me when I'm free and then you tell me it's safe to go outside and it's all good. That's not what freedom's about, you know, and, and that's that's just the weird mentality we've got. You know, people want freedom, but they don't know what that freedom is. They, they want to be free to have the choices that somebody else gave them, you know. And what is enlightenment? You know, enlightenment is a breaking down of the veil. Enlightenment is, is a very uncomfortable process. It's a breaking down of everything you thought to be true. And that's what this is. Yeah, just believe in yourself. We're at a really important time. So now is the time for you to believe in yourself and you know, have that power. And we can we can move this forward. No stake in the outcome, folks. Face infinity without flinching. That's what you came here to do. This is a big test. This is a big yeah. moment. So, so yeah, grab a hold of yourself. It's going to be a, a good ride. Thank you.